మరి నన్ను గురించిన స్వాగత మాట నిన్న ప్రేమాన నిన్న అభినందాన్ని చూపుతూ రెవరెండ్ సుగంధర్ గారు అలాగే సహోదరి అనుష గారు చెప్పిన దాన్ని బట్టి ఎంతో సంతోషిస్తున్నా నిజానికి అట్టి మాటలకు నేను అనుకోవడమే కాదు అండ్ without wasting any time let's get into god's word on this wonderful thanksgiving sunday mari sami urdha cheyakunda chakade thanksgiving aadivaram rojuna devu vaakyam nadu padala mari precious heavenly father i come to you in jesus name prabhu gara priya patlaku tanri yesai naamamlo nenu yedukku vastunnanaya we thank you for the sunday we thank you for christ soldiers church here in yapral second of our lord where the people of god are gathered to worship you on a thanksgiving sunday prabha yapra lo nana christ soldiers sangham lo prabha ee thanksgiving church service lo nana brother sundaram and sister ne gather ayyadu ki bhagavan chalustunna even as i take your people to your word on the subject of what apostle paul taught on the subject of giving thanks i pray the holy spirit will help me as believers as christian leaders as uh, growing lord disciples of jesus we want to take thanksgiving tuition from apostle paul prabha viswasulaga edugutunna shishulaga prabha apostle ayina paul garu nunchi krutajnata kustulu ela nerchukora tuition nerchukora sahayam cheyandi and i pray that this message will transform our attitude will transform our actions and make us grateful people who will build god's kingdom in the days to come tanri ee sandeshamu nana ma charilanu ma yokka vaikhirini nanu nee rajyam kattudlo nee krutajnata kaligina prajalaga maapla marchunu gaaka in jesus christ am i pray yesu christu naamamlo prarthisthunna tanri as indians we are very grateful to our captain indian captain rohit sharma ondi bharatiyuluga bharatiya cricket team captain rohit sharma ga vishayalo manandaru vento manchi captain dariki nadu thanks cheptu unta kada because of his unselfish team first he last approach india are playing their playing a world cup final today lady today Uh, toss is at 1:30, so I'm also following that as well. Okay, yes. Ah, <laughs> I'll finish the message before that. Yes. Toss one that ticket is there. Under that, we have another person who is going to be Rohit Sharma, the captain. Who is going to be this? Rohit Sharma, the captain. Who is going to be this? Rohit Sharma, the captain. Who is going to be this? Rohit Sharma, the captain. Who is going to be this? Rohit Sharma, the captain. Who is going to be this? Rohit Sharma, the captain. Who is going to be this? Rohit Sharma, the captain. Who is going to be this? Rohit Sharma, the captain. Who is going to be this? Rohit Sharma, the captain. Who is going to be this? Rohit Sharma, the captain. Who is going to be this? Rohit Sharma, the captain. Who is going to be this? Rohit Sharma, but he was not playing for his 50 but he was still accelerating getting some quick runs for india in the first 10 overs with there are when there is fielding restriction mari ana modaka digita ga batting ki nalugu saaru 40 daaga vachadu gaani ekkada kuda edo out chesi 50 cheyal anukoledu gaani starting lo ekku runs jodinchadu kada mari fielding parimitu untayi dantlo ekku runs kottalu aalochinchadu gaani 50 chesko record chesko anukoledu gaani he got out at 44 He got out at 44, 48. He got out at 46. He got out at 40. Got out at 47. Typically, Virat Kohli was batting. He would have made all this 50. But not, but not Rohit Sharma. Team first. Personal milestones behind. That they don't matter. He doesn't need to get a 50. He needs to get that boundary or that six in the lower. And now my little brother, now we have to get the picture of the card. The third one, what is that? And in India, the team will do all that. The captain will be added. Twice he was batting in his 80s. But he is running slowly. I am not going to charge too much. I was batting. I am talking about this World Cup, 2023 World Cup. What are you talking about? He won the official. He got out in 86. Once in 87. Any other player, even you know, any other normal cricketer would have made this into 100, but not Rohit Sharma because he's always looking for quick runs, even in his 80s. And where they get out there, where they get out there, do? Can you put up with that? Where are they? Are they still? Are they still over? Some some bass are there. Can can he team with them? And the third one, the bass can't see with a quick run. See, I just saw it. And when he got out at 131 in the match against Afghanistan, they were only bowling the 26th over. If you 
was the Rohit Sharma of the old before he became captain. When he was playing under Dhoni or under Virat, he would have not got out of 131, he would have aimed for a double century. I probably has made three double centuries in ODI cricket. I have put Rohit Sharma to captain Bhaji to this court Rohit Sharma into the very captain of the day. Afghanistan to Irvai the only girl or not to play there. Because he put team first and gave India the acceleration and push. Today we are playing the World Cup final and God willing we will win it. But we are not here this Sunday morning to praise Rohit Sharma. We are here to give thanks to the ultimate captain of salvation. That is the name the Bible gives for Jesus. We are here to praise and give thanks to God for the ultimate captain of salvation. Three times Apostle Paul puts the word thanks and Jesus together. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 57, he says, But thanks be to God who gives us victory through Jesus Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, Paul says, But thanks to God who in Christ always leads us in a triumphant possession. And for the third time, Paul put thanks and Jesus Christ together in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 15. Of course, here he didn't talk about Jesus, but we know that he is talking about Jesus. He says, Thanks to God for his indescribable gift. We can sort of describe uh, Roy Sharma in a few words, and we are trying to do, and these papers are full of articles about him. But uh, uh, Jesus, at the ultimate capital of our salvation, we cannot adequately describe him, and we cannot adequately thank God for Jesus. No, the other day I was speaking to uh, uh, high school boys and many of them were from different faiths, from uh, Islamic faith, from Hindu faith, and of course from uh, many boys from the Christian faith. And uh, I was asked the question, why I chose to follow Jesus? And the Holy Spirit moved my heart to answer this way. I follow Jesus because he answers the questions of life. What is the most important question of life that many people are asking? The quest, that question is why bad things happen to good people. Why would 18 month old babies get raped in this world? And I said, Jesus gives the answer for that question. He says, I'm going to come back to this world one day. And everybody will stand before me. Even those who are dead, their bodies will be reunited with their souls. And there will be a day of accounting. 
So the evil that you think is not taken care of today will be ultimately taken care of by Jesus. Jesus answers the questions of life. And that is one reason why I am I thank God for Jesus this morning. But today, as the Holy Spirit led me, my sermon topic is a Thanksgiving tuition from Apostle Paul. First of all, Apostle Paul, through various references to Thanksgiving, talks about the importance of Thanksgiving for the Christian. The first importance is the Son of God. Thanksgiving makes us like the Son of God. Young man, 
you know, that girl is a believer. She's beautiful. She's a believer. Is it God's will for you to marry her? Maybe not. Maybe you have to ask her. You know, she might say no to you. So we don't know. Marrying a beautiful girl who's a believer, maybe God's will, may not be God's will. Getting a job in that corporate company, maybe God's will, may not be God's will, but you can try, no harm in trying. And parents, we can plan to have one boy and one girl. God can give it, God may not give it. It, if it, it depends on His will. So we can't change God's will. We can't change God's will. We can't change God's will. you are grey, give thanks. When your bank account is full and overflowing, give thanks. When your bank account is low or almost nothing, give thanks. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. from the great apostle Paul. We are studying on the subject of the importance of thanksgiving. But the first reason is the son of God and the second reason is the will of God. And the third reason is the command of God. You know there are times when I uh, try to divert the topic and then Say something to my wife. But she's a smart lady. She says, first of all, do what I told you to do first. First of all, I told you to brush your teeth and then come and give me a kiss. What you do to do? <laughs> First of all, do what I say, then I will do what you want me to do. And God also has his first of all in the Bible. In, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1. Oh, oh. 
all people, all Indians. All the land and all the mountains and all the trees and all the birds. Do you know it's God's command when you see a pretty bird with a beautiful color combinations? You must say, stop to say, thank you, God, for creating that pretty bird. When you see a dog, and you know a lot about dogs because yeah, you can learn that all from your pastor. When you see a dog, when it sees sees the dog, when you see the dog wagging its tail, sometimes being more faithful to you than miserable human beings, you praise God, you give thanks to God. So it's the command of God to give thanks for all. We are learning thanksgiving tuition from Apostle Paul. Why is it important to, uh, to give thanks to God? The Son of God. It makes us more like Jesus. In the, the will of God. It's God's will that we should give thanks in all circumstances. Thirdly is the command of God. Not just not the command of priority command. Unfortunately and very importantly. Why is Thanksgiving important? The people of God. When you carefully study the writings of Apostle Paul. And uh, when I was preparing for this message, as the Holy Spirit directed me to prepare, I saw Paul giving thanks for his congregation members or people in his life eight times. Let me show you some of the references. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 4. First Corinthians 1 and 4. I, oh. Thank you. Yes, I always thank my God for you. He says to the Corinthian church, I always thank my God for you. This was uh, a church which increased the blood pressure of Apostle Paul. One man was sleeping, having sexual relationship with his own mother in the church. And Paul had to discipline that man. But nevertheless, he says, I thank God for you, Guruji. How you thank God for difficult people in your life? You say, my, the most difficult person in my life is my husband. That's, that means you should thank God for for her for Thank you, Jesus, in your power. Ephesians 1 16, the Bible says. Paul says, I have not stopped giving thanks for you. Remembering you in my prayers. So, you know, you imagine Apostle Paul, the great man of God. Whenever he has free time, what do we do? We become very compassionate. We think uh, Google should not go in loss. <laughs> because, because Indian CEO now, uh, Sundar Pichai from Chennai is Indian CEO. So yes, Google should not go in loss. So have I'll give business to Google. That's our priority. 
and working, but today I'm able to pursue God's destiny for me. Not focus on salary, but focus on God's destiny for me. Because God, in His mercy, gave me a good wife. And I praise God. And I'm going to ask you today, on Thanksgiving Day, do you thank God for the loved ones that He's placed around you? And do you praise Him? Do you say, I cannot thank God enough for you? Thank 
ఒకరు దేవుడు ఎరిగియో ఆయన దేవుడిగా మహిమపరచలేదు ఆయన కృతజ్ఞతలు చెల్లించలేదని ఏ వారి గురించి చెప్పుకుంది so that's the connection between salvation and thanksgiving ah rakshanaku krutajataku unna sambandham mudi ani what is salvation endu rakshana giving thanks to god who is speaking to you always anni velala neetu maatladutunna devuku krutna sut cheppinda bo rakshana what is salvation rakshana ani it's saying god you've been speaking to me from the time i ate attained the age of accountability you've been speaking to me from the skies you've been speaking to me from the soul but now you are speaking to me from the bible i read of jesus who died for me in the cross thank you for speaking to me i'm a little fellow chota fellow i have no significance but living god you're speaking to me i repent i come to you i give my life to you that is the gospel rakshana entendi deva na moha vachi jawabu dara నేర్చుకున్నప్పుడు but if you don't do that and you are stubborn telisi kuda krutajyata cheppakunda modi kattalana unnaruko we romans chapter 1 and then read below verse 21 and you read till the end of that chapter what happens is if you are stubborn and you don't acknowledge god even though god is clearly speaking to you the bible says you will degenerate into sexual sin including the horrific sins of lesbianism and homosexuality that led to the arrest of yarat fogel and and 
I saw some sandals there. Lady sandals. One sandal I saw. I know that's Ivan's sandals. Ivan's with sandals. And my heart skipped a beat. Something is happening in my heart. As I went out to enter that house for that fellowship meeting. Because I am was falling in love with this girl who told me after one of those fellowship meetings that she has committed to be a missionary. And then uh, as I journeyed through these 22 years of marriage, I looked at a shelf which we got from IKEA, which is a, a sandals shelf or a shoe shelf. It's full of her footwear. So when, I, when I open it, uh, thinking it, my footwear is also there, and I find it it's full of her footwear, that same uh, that same thing in the heart is not there now. So I tell myself, Duke, marriage is hard work. Marriage is falling in love with the same girl all over again daily. Amen. So daily holy living also takes work. Daily when we learn to fall in love with Jesus afresh. Amen. That day you get power not to see porn. That day you get power not Amen. to lose your temper. Timothy. 
says, Timothy, be careful. Timothy, you to Jara Bhatta will not tell you. All these false teachers. What do these false teachers say? Don't get married. Don't eat these foods. But you know what? You should get married if it is God's plan for you to get married. Maybe it is not God's will for me to be get married or no girl said yes to me. But if it is you, you know, there's nothing simple about getting married. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 7 39, I wrote, you can marry anyone. Anyone means anyone, but only in the Lord. That's the only condition. You can marry anyone but in the Lord. So, this teaching is against the written word of God. So, so give thanks and get married. That's what he says. Give thanks and get married to a believer. And give thanks and eat any food as a new test New Testament Christian, you can eat any food, pork, anything you can eat. Haven't you heard what Peter talked about? How he was in that upper room and prayed, and God showed him a vision, a dream, in which all the animals were there, including the unclean animals, and God told Peter, kill and eat. So as believers, we must be very careful that of any teaching that goes against the written word of God. So, what are some of those teachings? This one teaching is because of grace of God, you can live as you like, you can live in sin. That is hyper grace teaching, unbiblical. What is another false teaching? God always must do a miracle here and now, it is compulsory. Church, there were some people who were who 
who have the ability to give to God. And Paul talks about the Macedonian churches. Macedonian church had a lot of poor people. But out of the poverty they gave to God. Paul says if that church can give out of poverty. You are blessed by God. How much more can you give? Here for the believers in the Jerusalem church. What happened to those believers? They came from different day, different areas for the for the for the great Jewish festival. On the day of Pentecost, Paul Peter was preaching to them. Maybe became believers. Three thousand people were baptized. Many of them stayed back in Jerusalem. But they had no jobs. Financially, they were very weak. And what's more, the persecution started in Jerusalem. Climax was a stoning of Stephen. So they were because of persecution, because of joblessness, they were in extreme need, these believers of the church in Jerusalem. But the church in Corinth was a rich church. So Paul tells them in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 11. Your generosity will produce thanksgiving. So when you give for the work of God, especially the work of Christians and the work of serving the poor to the local church, what will happen? Thanksgiving will be multiplied. So somebody is blessed because of your giving. And that somebody praises God. And when they praise God, when they praise God, God gets the glory. So the, through the Christian discipline of donation or giving, you actually make the praises of God more and more. Thanksgiving to God, you increase thanksgiving going up to God. But one, one thing will stop you from giving. And that is in found in verse 5, 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 5. And it's found only in the King James Bible, the King James Version. So when you read 2 Corinthians 9 5 in the King James, and you understand that verse, Paul says, if you are covetous, then you cannot be given. What is covetousness? The, you know the Old Testament command, Ten Commandments, do not covet your neighbor's wife. Do not covet what he has. Which means you are not satisfied with the riches you have. You want more, more, more. Always you are thinking, what more can I get? What more can I get? If you have that mentality, you will not give. But if you think, I thank God. I thank God. God has given me wonderful things. God has blessed me. Then you will be a giver. Out with covetousness, in comes thanksgiving. If you come to a local church and you don't give and you're only a spectator, you are saying something. You are saying that the church should close down. Church should not close down, but what? By you're not giving yourself, church should close down. 
If you give less than what you gave last month, and or if it last uh, last cycle or last time you, you wanted to revise it, last financial year you want to give less, then you are saying some of the activities of the church you should uh, they should stop. If you give the same thing forever for the rest of your life to the return of Jesus, then you are saying church should not grow. What it does, it should do only that without doing anything else. But if you increase your giving as God gives you the ability to increase doing away with covetousness from your life, then you're saying the kingdom of God should expand to the work of the local church so that the in new frontiers we can rise up worshiping communities for Jesus and the gospel of Jesus will be preached to every person in this world. That's a question you should ask yourself. I want you to close your eyes. All eyes closed. All eyes closed. The tuition of Thanksgiving from Apostle Paul. Will you say, Lord, I come under the teaching of your word? There are some lessons I want to unlearn, O oh Lord. And I want to learn some new lessons for my life. Lord, I want to thank you for the, the people you put in my life. I thank God for my pastors. Now, Nehemiah said uh, three times in chapter 13, I, uh, uh, Lord, remember me for what I've done. Lord, remember me for what I've done. Lord, remember me for what I've done. Three times he said, uh, Lord, remember me in Nehemiah chapter 13. Nehemiah chapter 13. Why? Because he did so much for the people. He took leave from his government job, came to Jerusalem, talked, took a, trained the team, and they rebuilt the walls in 52 days. But nobody said thank you. So because people didn't say thank you, said Lord, you at least remember me for whatever. So will you thank God for your pastors? Have you said thank you to God for your pastors? Because they lead you in sound doctrine. Because they give you counsel, they pray for you. They do so many things that we cannot mention even from in, in one or two minutes. Will you thank God for the difficult person in your life? We thank God for giving you time, talent, treasure, and so many blessings. You just will you, will you make a commitment to God and say, Lord, Lord, I will be a thankful person. I will not be ungrateful, but I will be a grateful person today. So I want you to, I want you to put your hand over your heart. And say, Lord, give me a grateful heart. The times when I'm ungrateful. I'm so sorry. I'm always, I want to be grateful to you. Because when I'm grateful to you, I become more like Jesus. When I'm grateful to you, Lord, I obey your premier command. When I'm grateful to you, I fulfill your will. Trials may come. 
Unfavorable circumstances may come. But as your word says, in everything, I will give thanks. Everything I will give thanks. When it comes to holy living, I will keep falling in love with you more and more. You have shown me the way to a holy life. It's not a series of do's and don'ts. It is loving Jesus with a greater passion. Thank you for that method found in your word. And, and I want to thank you for that word which is not found in any other holy book. I cover all 
that in this in this little book. Uh, 100, 150, 200. So uh, they'll be available. Back pastors uh, will receive it, and uh, you can contact pastor for your copies. But there are things that you can take away free, and uh, this is the public track, gospel track free. Uh, this is the Doni cricket based gospel track free. And a magazine which has a message from Revelation on sexual purity. This is also free. A few copies available. If, you, uh, if you're able, if you promise to read it, please read and also give it to the next person who can also read it free. So we can put this on a table and uh, you can help yourself when you have lunch or before lunch. And I want to tell you it's been a joy, absolute joy for me to minister God's word. And thank you for your patient listening. God bless you. Keep the fire going.